YouTube, what is good? Rejoice, it's a quick tip video. And today we are learning about this right here, light trail photography. Now today's video is a challenge from Panasonic. They reached out to me earlier this month and they gave me the theme of light. And y'all know your boy loves summer, but one great thing about autumn and the days getting shorter is the fact that all the artificial light around us comes alive. Things like street lights, moving cars, buildings. These are all things that can be used as creative elements in your photography and as the days get shorter, you have more time to take advantage of it. So that is what I'm teaching you about today. Now, full disclosure, this video is sponsored by Panasonic. They did send me their new S5 camera right there. I'm recording with it right now. It's looking beautiful. And also that intro clip was recorded on it. And there are a few clips in this video today that are recorded on my iPhone and my GoPro. Everything else is on the S5 and I am extremely impressed by this camera. I haven't had it for very long. There's all these different video codecs. You can get 4K 10 bit. You can also get 4K 6 the time-lapse feature on here makes time-lapse so easy and so fun. I was also super impressed by the low-light video capabilities on this camera. You saw that intro sequence, those files straight out of camera. They looked fantastic. So you can head to the link in the description on today's video to get more information on the S5, but let's get into it. So first things first, when it comes to light trail photography, you obviously need a tripod. You're going to need that because you are creating a long exposure image. Essentially, light trail photography is light passing in front of your camera, and that's how you need to think about it. That's one of my favorite things about photography is the fact that photography allows you to capture time passing. So let's use this city scene right here as an example. This photo is made at 1 15th of a second, barely any motion because the camera shutter just clicked down so light didn't really pass in front of the camera. Now this next photo right here is one second. So we are getting one second of movement. As you can see, the cars are moving a little bit, but it's still not that dramatic light trail we're going for. So on two seconds, a little bit longer of a trail because now two seconds of movement is happening in front of your camera as the shutter is left open. Now we're onto four seconds. We're really getting that long exposure here. We're getting these big long trails and then we jump up to six seconds, even better. We jump up to 10 seconds and we really get that dramatic light trail effect. Now here's the thing with light trails. Shutter speed is obviously the most important because you want that time to pass in front of your camera and capture that light moving. But you need to balance out your settings accordingly to keep a proper exposure. So in the case of this photo right here, we had to make it at 10 seconds f22, whereas this photo that was made at one second, we had to make this at ISO 800 f10 one second. So the main difference between these two photos is at one second the aperture is f10 and at 10 seconds the aperture is f22. The reason for this is at the longer exposure time of 10 seconds, we need to allow for the same amount of light to come into our camera as was coming in at one second, which means we need to raise our aperture up. This is actually one of the cool things about long exposure photography and light trail photography like this is it helps you learn the exposure triangle of photography in a fun, interesting way. So you can get out, try this for yourself. And if you mess up, you can start thinking in terms of, okay, this photo is overexposed, too much light came in. I can raise my aperture up, which is going to allow less light or vice versa. Now, one big theme on this YouTube channel is creating with what you have and not using limitations as an excuse. So let's say you don't have a city around you. You are all good. You can create long exposure photography essentially anywhere that is dark. I made some test photos in my office earlier today using some lights that I have laying around and you captured the effect the exact same way. Now, I'm not going to lie. It is more difficult to do this than it is to create out in a city scene just because you have to draw with the light. You're going to do the exact same thing here. The longer your shutter speed is, the more light motion you are going to get through your camera and then you're going to have to experiment with your settings to figure out the appropriate aperture and ISO to balance out that triangle and get a proper exposure. And if you even want to use the excuse that you don't have a light available. Most of us have smartphones that have a flashlight on them. So you can take your smartphone, you can wave it around in front of your camera while the shutter is open and you can create these light trail effects. This is typically called light painting. And like I said, it is way more difficult to do this in my opinion than it is to go out and create something. But no matter where you are, if it's dark, if there are lights passing in front of your camera, you have the potential to create something interesting, unique and capture time passing right in front of your camera, which is pretty awesome. So that's it for my quick tip. If you have questions down below, let me know in the comments. The number one thing you have to remember is shutter speed is everything and balancing out your settings around the speed you wanna have is the most important part of it. So if too much light is coming in, what do you need to do? 
you need to raise your aperture up to allow less light to come in. And if too little light is coming in, you either need to open up your aperture, and if your aperture is maxed out, you need to raise your ISO. So that is it for today's video. That is the quick tip. Thank you so much to Panasonic for being a part of today's video and allowing me to use the S5. It is an awesome tool, and I'm so hyped on what I created for this video and what I'm gonna create for future videos. Get out there, try it for yourself. I'm telling you, the whole light painting thing, it's way more difficult in my opinion, but if you create anything cool, feel free to tag me in it on social media. Catch y'all next time.